Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I fly large rockets without spending a lot of money. Okay, maybe not that large. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rocketeer. I save money by making my own motors. I've been doing this about seven years and the thing about making my own motors is they're always in stock, no hazmat fees, they perform very well and there's a lot of satisfaction into seeing your rocket fly off the rail on fuel that you have made. So let's take a look at how I do it. This is a 38 millimeter grain and this is a 54 millimeter grain. The reason they're different colors is because I've made my own casting tube or casting wrap. Usually they're white or brown or something like that. And I'll show you how I do that. The main thing that we need to know is that in order to do this as safely as possible, I use an induction cooktop. Now, the thing about this top is it's uh, easy to control the heat. You can control the amount of heat. It really doesn't take that much. And you have finer control over this. And the cooktop does not get any hotter than the pan itself. So that makes it safe in case you accidentally spill or drip fuel on this. It's not going to ignite. Now, I know a lot of people will use just a cooktop that has an open round burner on it or a cast iron top. I'll give you instructions on the safest way that I know to use that. But I highly recommend that you get an induction cooktop. I'll leave some links in the description. And I do make a small amount of money off uh, these links if you purchase the materials through that. Okay, let's take a look at how all this happens. This is real rocket fuel, and it requires some safety precautions. One thing that you will need is a fire extinguisher. Don't make fuel without it. Put it about 10 feet from you, because if the fire starts near you, you won't be able to reach this. This is not something that you make on your parents' stove while they're away. Do not use a gas stove or an electric stove. You should do this in an outbuilding or a garage where everything that's flammable has been moved away from the sides and everything that's flammable up top has been moved away too. Only start out with small batches of fuel until you know what you're doing and you know how the fuel is going to react when you pour it and uh, make sure that you don't get burned. It's very easy to get burned on a hot fuel. Just use a few precautions, some common sense, and uh, responsibility is up to you. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to set up our casting station. We have potassium nitrate, 260 grams, sorbitol, 112 grams, and some magic pixie dust. Yeah, you can tell right there. No, nah, it's just sucrose, and that is 28 grams. So I'm making a 400 gram total, which is more than enough for what I have here. I'll have some left over, and uh, you can use the remelt or fuel that's left over from a casting. You just put it back in the pan up to 15% or so, and uh, you can just remelt that propellant and use it. So I'm going to go ahead and spray my stuff here with Pam. Uh, it's a cooking spray, I should say. And uh, this comes in different flavors. Uh, pick the flavor you like. And one advantage of this is you can add it to your grocery store bill along with the pixie dust. And that way you have more money to spend on rocketry. But I'm going to give it a good dose of this. And this will prevent the sorbitol, the fuel, from sticking to our casting tools. Sort of. Okay, so I'm going to give it a liberal dose. Let's go ahead and move our elements here. Oh, and one thing too, I just use a craft stick to uh, mix everything up. You can use a uh, spatula if you like, but I've done it so long with a craft stick, I just use that. I like to use the uh, just natural colored ones because a green one will impart a cast to it. Unless uh, you want to make alien green or something like that. But uh, to start with, just use the uh, natural colored craft stick. I'll leave a link in the description to most of the stuff here. The casting tools are made from Delrin or acetyl. And uh, these are uh, acetyl rods. And I turn these on my mini lathe. But you can also 3D print the parts. Yeah, that's real convenient. Right there out of PETG or ASA, whatever you want, something like that. And uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get everything lubed up. So you want to give a liberal dose of this to everything. And, yeah, it's kind of kind of sticky, but uh, that's the price you pay for, you know, making your own rocket fuel. 
and give everything a good spray like that and that should do it so then I kind of twist these around make sure everything's nice and coated and this is my sloppy side I try to keep this over here from my dry side and then I'm going to put my casting sleeves or casting tubes on here and prepare them now it's time to put all our components in the pan and start heating them up. I've got our cooktop all set up and uh, one thing I want to point out is I'm using a stainless steel pan. You have to use an induction rated uh, pan for these uh, induction cooktops. Stainless steel works good and uh, it has a pour spout. That's something that you really want is a pour spout. Without that it makes it difficult to uh, hit your target. So I'm going to go ahead and kick this thing on. I tend to heat mine by power rating, so I'm going to give it a thousand watts. I've always done it that way. You can also program most of these to a temperature, and uh, that may work better for you. You'll just have to try it. And uh, I'm going to set the timer once I get going here, so we can get an idea how long this takes. And uh, it always takes longer while I'm talking, but you'll get kind of an idea of how long it takes to melt a propellant and get ready to pour it. So let's go ahead and turn this on. You'll hear a little bit of fan noise. I'll try to edit some of that out if I can, but uh, it doesn't take very long. And we'll start with a sorbitol, add the uh, pixie dust, uh, and then follow up with the um, potassium nitrate uh, because it does not melt very well. I'm going to go ahead and add the sorbitol. It's really powdery. Throw that around a little bit. Now you can mix the uh, sucrose in with it at the same time. Uh, I don't do that, it just adds another step, but if you wanna do that, you can. Uh, it seems to mix up just fine when you apply the heat and melt it. But uh, as you can see, the sorbitol is already beginning to melt. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat down to 800 watts because it's already started to melt and I'll continue to stir it slowly. This is the one minute mark. As you can see, the uh, sorbitols already melted fairly well. And I am at 800 watts. This is at 220 degrees. That's a good temperature to work with. Less than 250 should be good. Okay, you can see that there's a few clumps left, but it's mostly melted. I'm going to add the sucrose to it and blend that in. Two minutes, 15 seconds. 250 degrees, so I'm going to turn this down to 600 watts. Got a few clumps left. Two minutes, 52 seconds. I'm going to add about one third of the uh, potassium nitrate It'll start to get thick. I'm still at 600 watts. Three minutes, 16 seconds. Three and a half minutes, I'm gonna add the other third. Four minutes, 800 watts, I'm rather 600 watts. I'm going to add the remaining amount. At five minutes, the propellant is totally melted and I turned it down to 400 watts. And it's around, let's see, 240 degrees. That's plenty hot enough. The propellant's mixed up. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. If you are using an open element pan, this is the time that you would take the pan off and put it on a, uh, a pad of some sort. You would take it off the burner so it would not sit on the burner anymore. But because this is an induction cooktop, I can leave it on there for a very short amount of time and it'll be fine. Five minutes, 45 seconds. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to get my casting tools ready. Six minutes, I'm going to go ahead and pour the propellant. I start slowly at first and then pick up speed. That looks good there. Start slowly and then pick up speed. Go ahead and scrape the rest out of the pan. I didn't have as much left over as I thought. 
But we still have plenty of fuel. There's still some in the bottom that I could scrape out. Nine minutes has passed, and now it's time to push the coring rod down into the propellant. I like to let it cool just a little bit so that it sort of piles up like this and doesn't run all over, I hope. We'll see. It's still a little bit runny, but that's okay. That's why I put the tape on the top of it. It should overflow just a little bit like that. Give this one a go. I'm using three quarter inch rods. I have also made these with five eighths. But I'm flying on a small field, so the three quarter inch core works a little bit better for me. Gives me more lifting power and less height. Okay, so go ahead and drop these on there. It's okay if a little bit runs over. Ten minutes has passed. Another four minutes has passed. I'm going to go ahead and lift these up and start pushing the coring rod down. I'm going to save that plug for later. It's good for a test. There we go. The standoffs are just regular PVC. And then I just roll these up into little balls and those are our test pieces for later. Or you can use this for remelt. Keep it on the dry side. And after they get hard, if you're going to save them, they need to go in a Ziploc bag. At the 18 minute mark from the time I started, I'm going to start doing a little compression on this. And you'll see some squeeze out there and I'm going to work back and forth a few times and I will repeat this process uh, another couple of times or so I'll probably come back in another 10 minutes and give them another squeeze maybe another 10 minutes after that and give them a final squeeze but I'm compressing the propellant down just a little bit this helps to remove some of the air bubbles that are in it this has worked well for me some people use clamps, uh, and that works for them. I, For me, I found that is not necessary. It doesn't really help that much. And at this point, the propellant is just hot. You can start cleaning it up. And that's why I leave the tape on the top, because it helps with the cleanup. 20 minutes has passed since I started casting the grains. I've given them a couple of compressions by just taking this PVC pipe. And as you saw, I pressed down and hold it for a few seconds and then uh, slowly lift up on it. I do that a few times and that should work out well for you. That has always worked out for me. Now I usually start uh, casting another set of grains when I'm done with the first compressions and I make four or so uh, in a batch and uh, that will make a motor like this. This is a J450 and uh, if that's not enough for you, you can always uh, just go a larger case. Now, sugar fuels, uh, sorbitol, does not have the same impulse as uh, APCP or a commercial motor would, a uh, composite motor. It has uh, roughly half, a little bit more than half, but roughly half. So uh, you would say, why would you want to do that? Well, because it's, it's still inexpensive to make the fuel, and uh, if that's not enough for you, just then add another grain to it, or go to a larger size case or something like that. And uh, it's, will lift, uh, this will lift a 16-pound rocket uh, around 2,000 feet. And for the field that we fly on, that's fantastic. And, of course, if I want to go higher, I just go longer. Anyways, I'm going to let the grain sit for about an hour and a half now. And uh, then I'm going to push the coring tool out and check everything over. It's still a little bit pliable at that point. And uh, if there's anything I need to address, I can address it. Uh, some people leave them overnight. Now, you can do that, but I find that if you leave them overnight, that the, the coring tool just kind of gets stuck in there, and it's rather difficult to get out. So I usually punch them out after an hour and a half and just keep an eye on them, make sure everything's good. And then in the evening, I put them in a plastic bag and seal them up. Okay, so I'll see you back in a short amount of time, and we'll uh, take the cores out of the grains.
There we go. That one came right out. That looks beautiful. I'll just trim this edge up just a bit. That little bit of flashing on there. Smooth it over. And that grain looks great. I do have uh, about a quarter of an inch that, uh, that can be trimmed a little bit, but this gives a small amount of gap between the grains to help the motor to uh, ignite and also to provide uh, the performance that we want. Again, another nice looking grain. So I'll let these set for a few hours and then I'll cover them up and let them set, make sure everything's okay, and then I'll put them in a Ziploc bag with some desiccant. The grains came out fantastic. As you can see in the picture here, I uh, usually have four to six of them in each casting and uh, it's winter time here so it's a great time to stock up on fuel because summertime is kind of busy and I like to fly. So what I'll do next is I'll weigh each of the grains, I'll write the weight on it and the date on it and then I'll put it in a heavy bag, a Ziploc bag or even better um, I'll leave a description in down below where you can find some bags that seal well, they're made for food and they're really thick and it's important that the moisture stays out and that the grains stay dry. So these grains will be ready to use even as soon as tomorrow, but I'd like to give them a week for them to uh, fully set up and get really firm uh, before I put them in my motor. If you enjoyed the tutorial, give me a thumbs up and a like. If you found the tutorial useful, please consider using that YouTube thanks button or buy me a coffee. That would really help. Now it's time for me to go out, load up some motors, and have some fun. That's all for today. Blue skies, light wind. I'll see you in the next video.